What's, What's up? up? We're Fox Flower and this, this is the Cookhouse. Order up! What's up? We're Fox Flower and we're a post hardcore band from Ocala, Florida. My name is Joey and I play bass. My name is Wolfgang and I play guitar. Uh, my name is Scout and I'm the drummer. My name is Josh and I do the vocals. Yeah, so we have been a band in its current format, I'd say, for about two years. It's, it's been something that I've kind of had working in the background for a number of years. I'm originally from up in Massachusetts, and when I moved to Florida about seven years ago, it's something that I you know, started to try to get off the ground as I was getting acclimated down here. In the past two years, we seriously started to you know, write material together, get the current lineup built, and really kind of get the band off the ground. Um, as far as like, why the name Foxflower, it was actually kind of related to a poem that our old guitarist wrote, and it just kind of stuck. We were thinking of you know, what we could use for a name, which is always the hardest thing, and just kind of stuck. We just you know threw names around for a while, and we liked that one, so it's kind of Really the reason we went with it. Nothing super deep or super special, just sounded cool. So basically, most of the music actually ended up being written by Josh because it was done well before we were actually even in the band. He kind of just grabbed random stragglers from all aspects of his life. I know that he approached uh, Scout and Best Buy shortly after he started working there and <laughs> just kind of forced him to join the band or he suggested that he might be fired or punished in any sort of way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, most of the music ended up being written by Josh. Besides a couple of the pieces of the songs, namely Frame, there's a, a little piece that if no one's heard it before, it's, a, it's very close to my heart and I really like it. As far as all of the actual EP, the name actually kind of came from us being all transplants into Florida besides me and for most people Florida is like a paradise that everyone kind of goes to vacation to and we were kind of just like eh, behind the scenes it kind of isn't that great so recording it was a crazy ridiculous process of us trying to learn how to record our instruments and we all did it by ourselves in our own home studio and it was a painful process considering we all have full-time jobs and it was just back and forth of whenever we could schedule recording time. It was just this crazy setup that I don't think anyone's ever done before recording. Um, so the cover art behind Paradise is mine. It's actually commissioned from one of my favorite artists that I saw on Instagram. Their handle is Cult Class. And I was really into collage art at the time and I still really am, but I'm into bunch of different types of art and um, I was looking at all their stuff and I was like I really think that they could do great art for an album cover or EP cover and I kind of explained to them the same thing that I said about the EP name we all are kind of transplants so I was kind of like can you give it like a beachy type theme to represent that we are a band from Florida but like at the same time we're not like a pop punk band or even just like a anything softer or happier it's kind of darker music so we're like, can it be like darker in appearance? And um, she took her own little take on it and added in like an astronaut, kind of like, why would that belong on a beach? Along with like mountains and like a dark sky and the moon to represent like everywhere else that is definitely not the beach in a sunny, great time. My favorite song on the EP is Unbound. It's actually a song that originally, it kind of sounded like a pirate song when I first heard it and I was kind of not into it and then whenever our original guitarist left the band we kind of actually took out every single part that he wrote because we didn't really want to get a cease and desist and um, basically we modified it completely. I remember Josh and I went to an American football show and at that time we just really got into math rock and emo stuff and we were like hey we should add like a completely out of time, this math part into the beginning. That's kind of how the beginning all started. And it was originally like a song about, I think a girl or something. It kind of had a meaningless value to it before, but then once our old guitarist left the band, 
we just, it became a venomous track about how much we really didn't like the guy. And I hate to say that because I like leaving things on good terms, but we had a couple shows that we were trying to line up and then we were telling the promoters like, yeah, this is totally a go. And then he just pieces out randomly and kind of just tells us all he hates us. My favorite song is Frame, just because I feel like it's a very emotional song and it's the emotions I understand because it was written about something that happened close to me. As well as that's musically, I contributed a lot to that song, so it definitely is very close to home there and I just like it, how it sounds, and it's very unique in the way it's been formed. For me, I'll probably say it's has to be Frame and Unbound. I kind of like both of them as the favorites, um, just because for me personally, I wrote the majority of the drums. For the other three songs, it was kind of like, those songs were already there before I joined the band. Um, so I kind of just adapted to what they were and to you know, how they are right now. Um, but those two are the ones that I originally kind of wrote the entire drums for. And at that point, I hadn't played drums from my old, old band where I used to live in like, probably four to five years that I hadn't played drums. So kind of getting back into it and writing music was a very fulfilling process for me. Hmm. This is a very tough one for me because <laughs> like you said, children. I've, yeah, I had a huge, huge part in these songs existing even before everyone else joined the band. So it's definitely hard to pick one that I think is my favorite. I'll agree, you know, Frame definitely has a lot of meaning to me. It was written about something very significant that happened in my life, so it sticks with me because of how specific it is. I think overall though, probably my favorite song, I, don't know, I love the opener, I love Arsonist Architect. I feel like it's just a really strong opener. I feel like it really hooks the listener in, has a lot of really good high points, and it just really, really wants you, you know, to keep listening to the EP and really to get a full picture of what it has to offer. Um, that song I also feel you know, it sets a really good foundation for the concepts that the EP covers and touches on. So I think overall it's a really strong way to start and that was kind of the intention for that one. So I really do think that's a really strong track. So the future of Foxflower is a little different than predictable just due to the nature of the band. It's a little chaotic. So. Lots of bands can actually write a release in its entirety and then record it in its entirety and then release it in its entirety. However, we will write songs and then kind of shelf them indefinitely or we'll even record them and then we shelf them and then they come back and then we just dissect everything about it and then make it something else and that was a lot of the EP actually. So in the future there's definitely a lot of different music and I say that because we've been listening to lots of different music and we're not really just planted in heavy rock music like people would be led to believe listening to us. It's going to be kind of all over the place. Disney. Universal. I'm mad at Disney because they're supposed to refund me <laughs> my annual passes, but never did. So by default, I'm going to go Universal. It's Universal by a long shot. I'm not 10 years old anymore. And Halloween Horror Nights is the only thing I ever go to. So just Universal, easy Thanks. pick. Wolfgang's like, I'm so alone over here. <laughs> I'm just going to go. Wolfgang's girlfriend would kill him if he didn't say Disney, though. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm very fierce about this one. This, you might get a tangent, but uh, I, I'm very fierce about the idea of staying independent because even the smallest of labels are going to want to start dictating things or they're going to mess up your release, whatever about it. You're going to sign to a label and they're going to say, oh, you need more development. And then you're going to proceed to get no push whatsoever after you slave your life away and go into debt. So I completely believe independent. I agree, I agree with that to an extent, but if it's an extremely good deal, then I would say I would sign with the major label, but for the most part, I would want to remain independent. Yeah, I would have to agree with Joey on that one. I would rather stay independent. You know, there's a lot of horror stories of 
bands that sign the labels 360 and then deal. <laughs> the rounds all over they, the they sign to a label and then they're just like you know they have to dictate what type of music they want to write and i don't think anybody in this band is like content with writing music other people want to write we all just want to write the music we want to write um so i probably have to agree with joey and say yeah we, i would rather stay independent yeah, i would agree i think you know having that level of creative control is important because if you're gonna you know make music for a living and do that I mean, you want to do what you want to do. I mean, it would definitely be nice to have that support, but it's a double-edged sword in a lot of cases. So, so it really depends on the deal. If it was, you know, something where it's like, hey, we're going to support you, and we're not going to control you, which you know, I don't know how realistic that is, but <laughs> that would be cool. But otherwise, I feel like you know, being independent, especially in this day and age, when the ability to market yourself and you know, get an audience built around you know, social media is just so much more tangible than it used to be. It's so much more realistic now to DIY something than to have, have to go through a label like you used to. Yeah. Justice League, and that's because I'm sick of Avengers movies. I'm sick of the MCU. <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. Uh, a, I would say Avengers, probably. I want to pick Justice League. I want them to see, make them a comeback and make some good movies. I, like Avengers movies are like cool and everything, but there's so many good ones. We need a good you know, Justice League movie. Not huge on movies, but uh, I don't know. Specifically, the Snyder Cut of Justice League. Because <laughs> everyone wants to watch a four hour long movie. <laughs> if you're an adult, you're using bar soap. If you're a child, you're using shower gel. <laughs> those are the two options. I, mean, um, I didn't make up the rules, so <laughs> those are the rules that already existed. I mean, who uses soap? <laughs> Oh, oh god. I can tell there's only one person oh, on this couch that exfoliates. Skeptic <laughs> should use soap. Uh, yeah, use bar soap. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you what about you, Josh? What about you, Josh? I'm in bar soap, so I'm gonna go. There you go. You have to do it. It's only one kid in the band. <laughs> <laughs> the one who likes Disney. Yeah, the no, <laughs> one who likes Disney. <laughs> so I have lots of experience with both of these apps. <laughs> this is gonna be a question. <laughs> I can tell you from a statistic standpoint that you're gonna get way more matches on Tinder. It's just it's just an easy pick. Like as much as I want someone to message me first, I have plenty of ridiculous things written down that I'm just prepared to send at any moment. <laughs> Most of the time they get them because I just really am antsy and I can't wait to send them off. So it's it's easy Tinder, easy pick. Uh, I would also say Tinder for not the same reason. But but uh, well, the, you definitely get a lot more matches and uh, it's just better. I don't know, I've used both. I guess I'll just pick Bumble because that's what I'm using right now. That's literally it. I met my girlfriend on Bumble, so that's the default. See, I, I'm actually like anti-guitar, <laughs> so I kind of hate both of them. I have Fender basses, but don't be deluded to believe that I like Fender because I, I throw them and I destroy them. It's 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 either or. It's really whatever provides me the best instrument to wreck. I would definitely say either or as well. I've had Gibson, I have a Fender that I mostly play now. It's so either or, they're both great instruments. I don't know what to answer, I'm just the drummer. <laughs> uh, SJC drum kits. I've owned more Gibsons that I like than Fenders that I like. You know, they're both great, so... Plus, the Explorer is my favorite guitar, so I have to say Gibson. It depends what phase you're talking about. If we're talking about Xbox 360 versus PS3, this is a very clear pick <laughs> on the Xbox 360. Even Facts. though you're getting free PlayStation Network, you're playing against, like, the worst players online. It's, like, 10-year-olds who, like, just got it for Christmas. It's a bad time. Now, if we're talking PS2 versus original Xbox, it's PS2 all day. If you had the original Xbox, your parents hated you. Um, and if we're talking about like the uh, PS4 versus the Xbox One, it's it's the PS4. I'm sorry, the Xbox One kind of just ended up being like the worst console in existence. That's even talking about the random ones that existed in the 70s. What and the, the new ones? The new ones you can't even buy because of the microchip <laughs> shortage, so you can't even, there's, it's the decision still being made. Uh, I'll have to go on a uh, 
tangent and say PC. I swear, I knew you were going to go PC. <laughs> there you go. Because, uh, you beat me to the punch. Don't you double down on you this. You can always 100%. buy parts and always upgrade them. You don't have to buy a new console every few years. And it always has the best graphics. And so the last consoles that I owned was either the 360 and the PS3. I had both, and I liked my 360 a lot more. Ever since then, I switched to PC gaming, and I never looked back. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Halo was the only reason to have an Xbox <laughs> also 360 true. back in the day, <laughs> by the way. And now that it's out on PC, there's no reason to be meddling around with consoles. But... Do it if you want, like, waste your money, man. I don't really care. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't even matter, because you can play a Skyrim on anything, so. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of both of them. I actually reluctantly uh, had to shove the shirts before I came. Um, I definitely think Big Time Rush a little bit more, and that's for the fact that I, I'm like very certain they're gonna add them into the uh, new Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. It's gonna be like an ice climber <laughs> for, for the four guys, and like the special move is gonna be the uh, the manager coming out. I think it's gonna be that. So it's definitely Big Time Rush. Uh, I don't like either of them particularly. Either I would just say the Jonas Brothers because I've heard more of them than Big Time Rush. I don't have to agree with Wolfgang. I've heard like one Big Time Rush song and that's it. And I've heard a couple of Jonas Brothers songs, so I'll go with Jonas Brothers. They're from Minnesota, by the way. If that changes your answer. True. I'd have to like to change my answer to Big Time Rush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also from Minnesota. I have no idea who Big Time Rush is. I've never, never, heard, heard, I've never heard of Big Time literally Rush. Literally at all? I've literally never heard you of You literally live under a rock. On culture. I don't know who that is, so I guess Jonas Brothers because I have no idea who that is. <laughs> So I often fight off bears during trash night. <laughs> There's a black bear that likes to steal my trash, so I have experience with that one, so a uh, bear. Honestly, as the only one born in Florida in the band, I have like a specific advantage versus gators. Like there's like a there's like a <laughs> ability, like my class ability, and that's fighting <laughs> gators. However, if I ever see that bear outside Josh's house again, I'm not gonna it out. It's gonna be like the video. <laughs> it's gonna be like the video of the guy punching the kangaroo. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that, yes, but it's I've gonna be that. just like that, and then I'll probably die afterwards. <laughs> you get one punch in there, and you're done. I would have to say gator as well, because I've seen some pretty massive bears, and I don't want to deal with that. What about the one specifically outside my house? The one specifically outside your house, so I'll be with that one any day. But. Yeah, I was gonna say, if it's the <laughs> one right north, it's a whole different story. <laughs> if it's the one right outside of Josh's house, I feel like I can take it. In any other case, it's a bigger bear I'll go against. I'll try my love versus the gator. To be quite honest, the only person that would be related to Xavier's school that I'd even want to hang out with probably isn't even there a lot. I don't think Wolverine ever hangs out there. He's just busy getting like shot and like having his adamantanium limbs somehow broken despite the fact that they're not breakable. <laughs> um, I, I guess just so I'm in the same universe as Wolverine. That's that's good enough. Uh, I guess I'd also have to say Xavier School, even though I didn't realize what it was at first because I'm uh, dumb. So I'm cool. Well, I definitely like X Men and that universe and all of that versus Harry Potter. I don't know. It sounds like a presidential speech where he's just accommodating <laughs> them. The X-Men universe can't exist because Logan can't happen, so. In the go with Hogwarts. <laughs> I can't relive that. Nah, I would That's have to go movie. with uh, <laughs> sad. Xavier School as well. I'm like a sucker for anything science fiction or related to science fiction, so. I believe all of you want Logan. <laughs> All I gotta say is, if you're living in a place with a Waffle House, you're going to Waffle House. If you're living in a place without a Waffle House, you're probably gonna say IHOP, but you're making the wrong choice. The most crimes I've ever seen committed was in, were in <laughs> Waffle Houses. <laughs> the most people I've seen quit on the job was in Waffle Houses. <laughs> I've, they're open all the time. It's awesome. You get like extra flavor in your food whenever the cook's smoking a cigarette and blowing it into the range hood. It's the easy pick. Um, I'm from up north and there wasn't any Waffle Houses anywhere near I was from. But I was That's there sad. for quite a while, so I would have to say IHOP. Why isn't Denny's an option? 
Denny's. Denny's. Hey, Denny's. 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 It's a good happy medium. It's not as expensive. It's always available. That's objectively worse, man. That's worse. Yeah. I would have to go with uh, with IHOP. Uh, I've been to Waffle House before, and it's like, uh, uh, I'd, I'd rather go to an IHOP than a Waffle House. Part of the scenery, man. I don't know. You go to Waffle House, you get a you get food and a show. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a dinner and a show. It's a Dolly Parton's thing. <laughs> this is a little bit of a different question. So, like, <laughs> country boy in the sense of like. I don't want anyone near me at all. Like, <laughs> far off the deep end, like living in the mountains with no neighbors type of country boy. Like, I haven't spoken to a human in weeks, country boy. Um, so definitely not the city, but I'm definitely not trying to get down with the yeehaw. If that's what we're trying to ask. <laughs> just a recluse. Not yeah, necessarily just, a country boy, just a just recluse. Just a recluse. <laughs> Um, I would have to play say city all the all day. What a good answer! What a great what answer! What a good answer! <laughs> no, I had a trail, particular man. choice for my answer. I'm definitely picking city boy, just because I can't live with slow internet. I've lived with slow internet <laughs> before, and it was the worst. Dude, Elon Musk has got you. Don't worry. Yeah. No, Starlink is way too expensive. For what it is. <laughs> so I'm going city boy because I need good internet. Probably halfway between. I don't like Ocala. Okay, <laughs> 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 Yikes. Uh, I don't know. The city, there's just a lot happening all the time. Some people like that. I don't like that. So some are a little slower. I don't necessarily want to live in the mountains, you know, and become a sage, but you know, I don't necessarily want to be surrounded by hundreds of people at all times either. So yeah. you should speak to suburbs. Yeah, there, there you go. go. It's the heavy medium. We have been Fox Flower. This is the cookhouse. We have two upcoming shows. We have one on the 27th in Ocala. And we also have one on the 17th of October in Orlando. So make sure to check us out at both of those shows. We look forward to seeing you there.